Doc, there's something I've got to tell you. Follow me. Doc, there's a woman here who came in as a patient, but she is a DEA agent. She set off the first DEA alarm, and then she pulled something out of her purse and used it to kill our alarm. Which alarm? The purple globe. It's dead now. So the second alarm is still okay? It's okay because she hasn't stepped in front of it yet. Doc, you've got to be very careful with this woman. She is very scary. Thanks for telling me what's going on. I will be very careful with this woman. I'm going to go talk with my friends. <laughs> Hi, Sally. I'm scared. That woman who's a DEA agent is very spooky and totally frightening. She is here to shut down your office and put all your patients on the street where they all may die. If I were you, Doc, I'd walk right back out that door, get in your car, and run back home. But I know you never run. You always stand up to them. My prayers are with you, Doc. Please save us. Sally, I will do my very best because I care about every one of my patients. They are innocent Americans in chronic pain. I will fight anyone who tries to harm them. Hi, Oliver. That woman is scary. I fully agree with Sally. DEA doesn't care about the patients at all. None of us count with her at all. You got to be careful, Doc. Be very, very careful. Thank you, Oliver. I will be very careful with her. Hey, Shayla. Doc, that woman is DEA. The DEA is pure evil. She is here to shut us down and put us all, our patients in chronic pain and out on the streets. We will die. Doc, her vitals were nothing. No blood pressure, no pulse. She is unreal. Can't you stop her, Doc? You got to stop her. She is out to kill everyone who suffers in chronic pain. Please stop her, Doc. I will always fight them, but they are very powerful. Hey, Doc, come in here. I need to talk to you. Doc, can I ask you something? Sure. I only work for the lab. Why is the DEA here? Oh, my. You need to know the story? Yes, sir. Please? We better sit down. In 2015, the head of the division called the Diversion Division in the DEA went to every state in America. In each state, he met with key legislators from that state. He told them a lie in 49 states. He told them that their state was the number two state for prescription narcotic abuse. The only state that was true in was Ohio. The rest were not number two. He lied to them. But they believed him because of his position in the DEA. He handed him a law and said, pass this and you'll fix the problem. The law was written by the leader in the health insurance industry, which made billions from the law. He also handed out packets of cash, promising to double the cash when the law was passed. The states all passed that law. The law said only a pain specialist can run a pain clinic. That law closed 99% of the certified pain clinics in America. Take, for example, Florida, which was the first state to pass the test. They closed over 800 certified pain clinics in one day. Their pain specialists in Florida could not take anyone in, and that put 320,000 chronic pain patients in Florida on the street with nowhere to go. Alabama passed the law second. 
They closed over 400 certified pain clinics in one day. Their pain specialist's office is full, couldn't take them in. They put 160,000 on the street in Alabama. Tennessee, we closed 308. We put 120,000 on the street in Tennessee. Nationally, when every state passed this law, the total came to 6.2 million chronic pain patients were put on the street that year. Wow. So, the law in 2015 was based on a lie. The one who wrote the law made billions of dollars by closing all those clinics every month that made money. And the money was dirty. That means whoever dies as a result of that law is murder. They put 6.2 million potential murder victims on our street. Yep, yeah, that created the opioid epidemic. Wow. Now, I reported the murders in 2016 to two Medicare investigators. We met in Murfreesboro. They asked me how to find the victims, and I told them. They asked me how many. I, at the time, told them, this is just starting, and said one or two per county. That allowed them to come up with an estimate of 120. I agreed with that number. Today, that number in Tennessee would be in the thousands. They told me that this was government investigating government and I could not be involved any further. I said, fellas, there's 18 layers of swamp between you and the Attorney General of America. How are these people going to get justice? The young one, the younger one, said, look me in the eye, and I looked him in his eyes, and he said, if the two of us find one victim, we will never stop. That was good enough for me. Three months later, they confirmed a victim. They told their boss, an assistant U.S. attorney, she had to call her boss, the U.S. Attorney of Tennessee. He's in Knoxville. That's a recorded call. He had to call the Attorney General of America that day and tell him about the murder and that 120 more may be coming out of one state. Wow. Mm -hmm. What did they find? in 2015 on the street, the 6.2 million. Chronic pain is something that bothers them all day long and all night long. They can't lift up that little person who's a grandson or a son. They can't clean that house as good. They can't do the laundry as good. They can't do a lot of things when they're in pain. They can't sleep. They went looking and found heroin. It was dirt cheap, little green tablets. The use of heroin in 2015 skyrocketed. That's why 6.2 million were finding it. Then somebody in 2016 tried to kill 10% of them. That would be 620000 He bought enough fentanyl to do that with. It cost him $8 million. The same somebody had to be right there where they turned the green leaves into the green tablets because he laced it into the tablets. The price of heroin did not change. So whoever spent the $8 million never made a penny back. But he didn't care. He did this to kill them. 
Did he kill 620,000 that year? I think he did. But if they released that as the opioid overdose death toll, he'd have given himself away. So he did a smart thing. He took off the last zero. And the federal government only reported 62,000, which could be blamed on the doctor. And it was blamed on the doctor. The media jumped into that with vengeance. Shut that damn doctor down. He's killing more people than die in auto accidents. It wasn't until 2016's November that an independent lab looked at all the deaths and reported that 90% died of heroin laced with fentanyl, which no doctor prescribes. Our federal government shut that lab down which allowed him to do it again in 17. That year, our federal government said he killed 72,000. But I wonder if they left the zero off of that too. Maybe it was 720,000. The next year, 2018, the federal government said he killed 70,000. Maybe that is 700,000? Then we came to 2019, and he went up to 92,000, according to the federal government. But, of course, it may have been 920,000. Then came 21, and he went up to 110,000, which could be 1,100,000. He has killed, by the federal government report, 500,000 since 2016. But it could be as many as 5 million. This is the largest mass murder in American history. Wow. Who can pay 8 million every year like it's no big deal? who can be right there where they manufacture the ta tablets every year. Why hasn't the DEA caught him? Because it is the federal government doing it with the belief that they will never be caught. But they made a mistake. The same time they were putting this fentanyl out there to kill the 6.2 million they were also actively shutting down the doctor. In the past three years, they have thrown over 2,000 innocent doctors who had been treating chronic pain patients correctly in federal penitentiaries. How did they do that? They colluded with the state medical board the board send the doctors a certified letter. The doctor opens the letter and the letter says the doctor committed 18 fouls. Tells 18 lies. The doctor knows they're lies. The letter says call within the next 72 hours or we're proceeding with a hearing to take your license away. He calls and sets up the meeting at the meeting, the state board tries to convince him to voluntarily surrender his license, telling him truthfully, nothing bad will happen if you do that. But no doctor is going to surrender his license based on a letter full of lies. So he asks for a hearing. But the doctor doesn't know that a medical board hearing is the opposite of a courtroom. Things are allowed there that would never be allowed in a courtroom. For instance, mm -hmm. when the hearing starts, the state goes first, mm -hmm. and the state board prosecutor will stand up and simply read that letter out loud, stating all the 18 lies as though they are the truth, and then sit. They don't have to show any evidence at all. The medical board will tell you, we know her. We know she never lies. We don't need to see evidence. 
If she says it, it's true. The doctor, who they don't know, has to show evidence that she's lying, but they don't know the doctor, and they'll assume it's the doctor doing the lying. Mm -hmm. They vote and take the doctor's license away. Mm -hmm. The next day, the doctor is not a doctor anymore. He's at home. Knock, knock, knock on his door. He goes to the door. Federal officials, step out here. Turn around, I'm putting handcuffs on you. Why are you doing this? Because you gave out opiate prescriptions to patients who did not warrant it. That's the federal term they use. The common term is they did not need it. Mm -hmm. No, sir, I never did that. Yes, sir, your state board certified that you did that. And that's a federal offense, too. I'm taking you to a federal penitentiary. Mm. Two days later, oh, it's time for you to call your lawyer. You talk to the lawyer, tell him about all the lies that threw you in jail. Okay, I'm going to file a lawsuit. I'll get you out of there tomorrow. He files the lawsuit. The judge calls him. You're saying these are lies. But the state board said these are certified true things. I'm throwing out your lawsuit. And the doctor stays in jail. Mm -hmm. By closing down the doctor to over 2,000 of them, innocent doctors, they put another 900,000 innocent pain patients on our street where they will kill them. Who's doing it? The federal government. Mm -hmm. Who's shutting down the doctor? The federal government. The mistake they made is in closing down all these doctors. Three different professors from three different medical schools at the recent pain conference in Tennessee all had the same slide. Here's the rate of opiate prescriptions being written in America mm -hmm steady for the last 15 years mm -hmm. and in the last two years boom today only 10 percent of that number are being written how did that happen they shut down the doctor that was supposed to bring down the opioid overdose deaths but what did they do during the same two years <laughs> off the page that proves the doctor was not causing the opioid overdose mm -hmm. deaths. Well, then who was? Our federal government was. Not China, not Russia, our federal government. This is wrong. We need to take our country back. We need soldiers, not politicians. America is full of soldiers. When the Convention of States start, they will all need the soldiers. And the soldiers will need be needed in our neary, very near future as well. We need to take our country back and stop these murders of the innocent people. Thank you, Doc. You're welcome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi, Teddy. I've never been this scared before in my life. I don't like feeling this way. Can you stop her, Doc? Can you make her go away? The DEA never goes away. The DEA lies all the time. And the DEA is powerful, with every bit of technology at its fingertips. This is my 50th sneak attack. Good God, Doc, I had no idea. I stick to the truth, but that doesn't count. They have the technology to invent their false truth and destroy the real truth. I will always stand against them when they come calling trying to push me to do something against the rules so then they would shut me down. This is her goal today, but I will always stand against those who would harm my patients. Be careful, Doc. We are all counting on you. 
We will be all right. I've done nothing wrong, and they know it, especially after 50 sneak attacks. Hi, Fred. You are the fox. You know what to do. Yes. What can I do for you? Those fucking pills you prescribed me aren't working at all. I want Xanax four times a day. I hate to tell you, I'm making a Halloween video. It'll be a few minutes till I can address your concern. I'm gonna track you down, do you hear me? I'm gonna trail you till I get what I want. Come here, my dear. <laughs> yes? You better behave. I guess I'll go back in there and wait for him. Thank you, Charlotte. Anytime. How many years were you in the FBI? 22 and retired 10 years ago. Thank you for your service. Simplify. Oh my. Bless you. Anytime you need me, please call and I will always stand with you. Thank you. <laughs> 